started. Again, thank you for everybody for being here, and uh, thank you uh, for your prayers for the family once again. And as I said at the church or at the funeral home just a few moments ago or a little bit ago, keep them in your prayers. It's a hard, difficult time for them. Let them know you're there for them. Let them know you care for them. Show them love and support. You know, death teaches us the final results of the choices we make in life. And for the person who's placed their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, death is just a transition. It's a transition from life here on the earth to everlasting life in the presence of the Lord. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, one of the thieves who was crucified beside him trusted Jesus for salvation. Now notice he wasn't baptized. He didn't have time for that. He was dying. Baptism doesn't get you to heaven. All he had to do was call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus looked at him in Luke 23 and verse 43, and he said, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 that we live in bodies that are temporary houses for our souls. And when this body has reached the end of its allotted time here, the soul is separated from the body by death. When that happens, those who are saved have this precious promise that the Apostle Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 8. He said, We're confident, I say, and willing, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. When death comes for the child of God, they transition from this world into a place called heaven. They simply trade what they can't keep for what they cannot lose. They leave this land of the dying and fly away to the land of the living. They go home. They go to a place that the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1.23 is much better. See, for Carrie, there's no more pain. There's no more sorrow. There's no more sickness. She's home with Jesus now. She's reached a land where there's no felon help. There's no more doctor's visits. There's no more hospitals. No more cancer. And what Revelation chapter number 21 and verse number 4 says is true in Carrie's life right now. And that verse says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Heaven is Carrie Beasley's final destination. He's home. Carrie has... All these things because he believed the gospel as all these things because he was saved. That's not the end. At least it's not the end of the best things. It's not the end of life and love, peace and joy and rest. But it is the end of disease and suffering and pain and sorrow. You can meet again if you've made the proper preparation. I told you at the funeral home, this, this is just Carrie's body. Carrie's not here. Carrie's in heaven. If you want to see Carrie again, you have to make the decision today to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You can be in heaven for all of eternity with Carrie. I say this with no disrespect intended. If you choose not to accept Jesus, you saw Carrie for the last time because he's in heaven and you can only go there if you accept Christ as your personal Savior let's have a word of prayer Father we come to you once again today Lord just thanking you for Carrie Beasley thank you for what he meant to us thank you for the blessing it was to know him to be able to call him family Lord, I just thank you for the precious memories that we have of him, Father. Again, Lord, I pray and ask you, Father, just to please be with this family in the days to come. Wrap your loving arms around them, comfort them, encourage them, uplift them. Lead them, guide them, and direct them. Lord, I pray you'd flood their minds with the precious memories they have of Carrie in the days to come. Help them through this difficult time, Father. Thank you for everything, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that if there is someone here today, Lord, and they've never trusted in you, I pray that today would be that day, Father. 
they fall out with sin and they fall in love with you. They come to know you as their personal Savior. Speak to their heart. Convict their heart. Help them to see that need. Comfort this family and do that that only you can. Lord, we love you. Thank you for everything. In the sweet, precious, holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask all these things. Amen. Honey, honey, I'm going to keep mine and give mine to my uncle. He couldn't be here today. us about an hour to get everything fixed here if you all want to go.